My guest today needs no introduction. Chris Fade went from washing dishes to becoming the most well-known radio presenter in the entire Middle East. But because he's probably seen it all, I decided to take him to a secret location. It's literally called the Secret Room, and it's at the library at my favorite address hotel, the Address Boulevard. I know there are so many address hotels, but this one is my favorite, and I'm going to show you exactly why. Follow me. Downtown Dubai, where money, power, and success come alive in the space of two square kilometers. Join me as I dive into the world of fame and fortune in the heart of the city where business never sleeps. I'm Lubna Hamdan. Welcome to Greenback. So thank you so much for joining us today, thank Chris. You. Really, really appreciate you taking the time. Good to be here. So my first question is, mm -hmm. how much hair gel does it take to get that slick look. It doesn't take any, it takes a bit of hairspray. Really? Yeah. You only use hairspray, no uh, hair gel. No gel, just hairspray. No gel. I'll take, how about at the end of this, I take it out and then I can I put it back in for you because I can just show you. Amazing, Yeah, it's yeah, weird, done. it's just, Let's but the, the thing is, I only wash it like once a week. I mean, it's healthy. Yeah. It's healthy. <laughs> and it's yeah. in a bun anyway. And it's, yeah, it gives me a headache sometimes. Gives me a headache sometimes. Very efficient. Yeah, I didn't I, think, I, I think, think I, is, I it, is, to it too, is it too slick? No, it looks good. I'm okay, maybe I, with you. now I'm conscious about it. Maybe I'll bring it forward a little bit. <laughs> does it, it does hurt you. Sometimes it, it looks does. Like it sometimes, yeah. To be a facelift. That's why I do it. It's like, hey, I got Botox. Perfect. Free facelift. Yeah. Exactly. Um, my second question is now seriously Are you the highest paid radio presenter in the UAE? Do you think you're the highest paid? I have no idea. I don't know what everyone else gets paid. Really? Do you know what they get paid? I, I don't, no. No, I've got no idea. <laughs> if you know how much they get paid, let me know. But I, I don't know how much they get paid. If I mean, I, how, how, how much do you get paid? I would never see, you can't say that. <laughs> and I, can I tell you? It's not that I don't want to tell you how much I get paid. But right, I, Do you want to give me a range? Between what? From the radio station? Let's talk about your wealth. Should okay. we talk about your wealth? Sure. How much do you think you're worth right now? Well, CNN told me when they did their, because we had CNN come in and then I had an analyst, not from CNN, but from another company, just do our business wealth, right? And it was, I felt so happy about it because I was like, wow, they use the word multi-million dollar company. Yeah. And for me, that was like, for my company Fade Fit, I was like, wow, did I just... Yeah. Did I just get the word multi-million dollar company? It's pretty cool, isn't it? Which was pretty cool. I've never, I've never thought of doing that. But yeah. why, why do you want to know about money? Like why, why I mean, is that the basis I mean, of the beginning of the, the interview? Money is so like... The show. Bleh. Is it? Come on. It is. Money can buy you beautiful things. Money can't make you happy. I love money and I'm not ashamed to say no, that. No, like, no, I'm not saying money is like, I'm not being this person like, yeah. oh, money's not great. But like, man, I'm not, you know, I don't no. have that much money. I mean, I think, I think people okay. think I have a lot more money than I probably do. Okay. I work a great job here on the radio. Um, and, you know, I, I make money on the outside as well, doing what I've got to do. You mentioned that you came from humble beginnings. Mm -hmm. You know, from, from washing dishes to being a radio presenter to now being this, you know, figure, you know, in, in the UAE at least. Do you have any advice for people? I mean, what, you know, what, what was your secret? I mean, you failed school. Is it, is it as simple as hard work? What is, what is the secret to... Um, yeah, it's, it's, I mean, I've got patience tattooed right here. It's patience. You've got to be really patient with yourself. Everyone wants everything now. Every, everybody wants the instant gratification. Which I think social media is partly, yeah, hugely true, responsible true, for. Yeah, you want to get it. Yeah, you want to get that instant gratification. But um, yeah, just hard work. You know, I've got, you know, everything that I want to say that I've done um, just came from literally hard work. It's, you know, working 18, 19 hours days every single day. And I want it. Like, I'm eager. I'm, I'm keen. I want, I want it. If I don't, I want to do it. It's not a forced thing. I want to be able to do what I'm doing, you know. And... You know, when, we, when I finished school, I didn't know what I wanted to do. This is what a lot of things we tell students when I, when I visit schools. I'm always like, I didn't, the first time I ever got into a radio studio, I was 24 years old or 23 years old. Never been in a radio studio but prior to that. And that was really just um, me lost from the age of 17 when I left school to that age. Didn't know what I wanted to do. And we are so forced by society and our parents to know what you want to do when you're right. 17 years old. Yeah. How old are we? Average human life, 80. We're supposed to know at the age of 17 what we want to do, 
Really? How are you supposed to know at the age of 17? We haven't even lived. Sure. But we're supposed to know what we're going to do for the rest of our life? No chance. So my parents were like, you know, we want you to go back to school so you get a better grade so you can get to university. And, you know, thankfully I battled that. And I have two older sisters who rebelled somewhat against my parents and they broke down the barriers for me. And, you know, I just think don't stress yourself out when you, when you get out of school. Be patient with yourself and find your passion. And I found my passion. Radio is my passion. Like to get up, you know, we've been getting up at four o'clock every morning for the last 12 years with Pretty and Rossi. And you got to love something to get up at four o'clock in the morning every day. Yeah. Because it is not fun. You never get used to it. And your body feels tired and it's mentally draining. Physically, it's draining. You know, when I take five weeks off and I get five weeks of regular sleep, I'm a different person. Like, that, it, yeah, that, that's great advice. Um, would you say that is an issue here? You know, pe pe you know, people don't go for the dishwashing jobs. They don't go for, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, you know, like you're it's, fresh out of college. You, you, you don't even want to do an internship. You expect to just start a job and get X, you know, thousands of, of dirt. Yeah, like it's, listen, it's an, it's not a, so much, I mean, it's not an issue, but it's, I've seen it here, 100%. Have I seen it in Australia as well? Yeah, I saw it in Australia. But yeah, we've had a few interns come over the years and like after three weeks of working for free, like have literally the conversation like, okay, um, guys, so um, can I get a job? Yeah. I worked for my first radio station for one year for free. One year. I had a full-time job working in the cafe called Jamaica Blue at Roseland Shopping Center where I grew up. And for one year, I worked for this radio station. And what was my job at the radio station? Cleaning up what they called the dungeon, which was downstairs where all the prizes were kept, right? And I would do that three days a week, but what did that give me? It gave me access to the building where all the radio presenters yeah. were. And so I just hustled that year out. And eventually someone saw me and took a liking and was like, hey, why don't you come up to the studios? And then from there, I started to learn the art of radio, being just watching people do it. I was still working my other job, but after I finished that job, I would go because I loved just doing it. It became like a passion. Instead of hanging out with my friends, I wanted to go see the radio studio. Yeah. And after two years of that, I eventually got to get behind the mic a little bit more, right? But it was like, it was, it was you know, literally, I'm talking cleaning out this dungeon. If I told someone now for a year to do that, no chance. It's great advice, especially but, for, for students here as well. You know, you, you, you should intern, you should go for that, you know, experience, you should work. 100% like, I always say like, if you wanted to be a journalist, for example, find the journalists in the country right now, message them and say, hey, yo, can I, can I come shadow you? I promise yeah. I won't bother you. Yeah. You know, even with my company, Fade Fit, I get like 20 messages, like, can I come work for your company? Mm -hmm. From Instagram. I don't even know who you are. Well, I'm just gonna, you, you, because you sent me a message saying, can I come work with you? Of course not. How can people come and work with you at, at, at Fade Fit? At, what at, would you require? At, at like the company right now, well, you know, we just, we, we just took on someone from Instagram, but she was really passionate about how she was, she kept hitting me up in a really cool way, but then she started telling me stuff that I actually wanted to hear about because she works in as a nutritionist somewhat and she understands about snacks and what she was saying resonated with me. But she said a couple of key things. I don't want money, I want the experience. And it's not that I want to get her for free. It's never that, but just you know where they're coming from. I want to make sure that people get paid for their time. I'm against seeing people do work that deserves to be paid. We'll get people every day going, can I get a job on Virgin Radio? I think I'd be really good. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, come here, man. Come. You know, like, it doesn't work like that. And people do feel like they should be given this. They, f they feel entitled. Yeah, he's, yeah. yeah, yeah. entitled because you, you, your parents may have a lot of money or you may have gone to a great school and all of a sudden you think, well, this is my pathway, but... You know, there are, there are a million people that would love to do what I'm doing and every day I've got to protect it. There's always someone knocking on, that, on your door wanting your job, no matter what you do. You, everyone wants to take someone else's job. That's what this world's about. Are you ever afraid that you're going to fade out of relevance? No, no, yeah. never. Why not? Because you know you'll always have that hunger. Because what if someone younger and, and, and better came? They have, came they come all the time. All the other radio stations are employing people. Oh, yeah, I know. 
They get other Australians, they get these guys, they got this, like I see it every day, you know? But what we have on our show, no one has. And that's realness, longevity. We've been together for 12 years. I'm not doing it on my own. I've got Pretty Malik, best female co-host in the world. She's been, they've tried to take her from other, like New York tried to take her. Like, oh, yeah. yeah, like she's got a headhunted a hundred times. I got Rossi over here from England who sits with me. Amazing comic, comedy genius, right? I've got Eddie who works with us, who's been with, like we've got this team, this energy that breakfast shows die to have. We're syndicated across Australia now, my old radio station. We're now syndicated across Australia. You know, we get anywhere between from the, I think the numbers the last time I heard were like close to 1.4 million listeners every single week are listening to it, to, to our show. What's the plan for the business? Uh, any expansion plans? What yeah, you the business is, you know, it's, it's hugely, you know, we're expanding a lot and, you know, we're, we're in snacks and multivitamins right now. But over the next coming weeks, we drop like smoothies. So we'll start to have smoothies, Greek smoothies. Um, we have more multivitamins coming out. We'll have crisps coming out. There's okay. organic milk coming out, which is skim and full cream milk. So that all hits uh, January, 2021. And after that, there are a few more larger deals coming through, which I've signed, which I can't say right now, but for the brand, it's, it's amazing. We've already sold into Saudi, Oman, South Africa, and Ireland. So we've already got distributors now in those countries taking our products. Okay. Um, we're, at, we're about a year old. It's crazy. We had a meeting just yesterday with my team. and um, Any investors? No, not yet. Don't need them. Okay. Been offered, um, but not yet. See how we that, go. That must feel good. Yeah, like it's, it's nice, but I, I don't want to be that person like, we don't need an investor. Because sometimes you will need an investor to really... Someone gave me a great analogy the other day. Or he said something to me, it may have been PayPal, but said, do you know what pay is? I may have the businesses wrong, but what he said was like, have you heard of the company pay? I said, no. He said, do you, had you heard of the company PayPal? I said, yes. He says, PayPal took investment, pay didn't. And I was like, wow, that's cool to know. Yeah. So like, there's always that in the back of my head, right? That I wanna just make sure um, that I'm wary of. I'm learning this, I'm a baby in this industry. You know, they, you know, I'm getting asked to talk about being an entrepreneur and all that right now. And I'm like, well, am I? Like, I'm just doing this. Like, I don't even know what I'm doing half the time. I'm learning as I go. Some yep. people see you as an influencer. Yep. Um, do you think influencers are influencers or more freeloaders? That's, no. a lot of, that's, that's the criticism that, that a lot of them get. If so. you don't recognize influencers right now, you're behind. You're stuck in 2017. You better influence, you better recognize influencers right now because this is it. This is the future only going to get bigger this is where agencies are spending their money i mean i know i work on radio there's radio spend billboard spend there's influencer spend right it's only going to get bigger so if there's there's still people sitting there going oh i don't know about these influencers look at them look what they're doing uh you're stuck these influencers in this country and around the world are doing an amazing job they're all hustling it's like you know instead of being on tv they're hustling their own way of doing it all so, of them are hustling yeah they're all trying all to put their them. content out hustling means that they're just trying their hardest i mean it's horrible some of it's horrible it's just absolutely horrible. Disgusting, some of well, them. Well, exactly. <laughs> yeah, but like, it's, that's, that's what they're doing, you know? Yeah. There's a guy, you know, there's, there's, there's influences that I know and what they put out, I, I think to myself, that's horrible. Yeah. You know, and I'm looking at, and I know what they're earning. Yeah. This is in the States, for example. Yeah. I've got a few mates or acquaintances that I know yeah. who I know they're pulling in three to 400,000 US dollars a month. But these guys, are the ones, and they're happy because they're creating content and they're just making a living out of it. And this is what they, what they do. One of the biggest influencers who I've seen just go from zero to what she is right now is Supercar Blondie, an amazing talent. I mean, she, she provides actual content, right? A lot, she, of the, a lot of the influencers don't really put out content. It's not, you know, if you're taking a picture, you know, posing with a bag, it's not really content, is it? I get what you're saying there, but there are people that like the content. So for example, I don't know if you know Nicolo Trend. Yes. Okay? Yeah. Her social media is her walking out of stores with bags a lot of the time. She's got a cult followers that yeah. love that content, right? Love it. Yeah. They love seeing her just walk right. out of a store right. with a bunch of bags. Yeah. A million views. I know. Yeah. So it, it's but each see, to that, their that, own. That, that's what bothers me though. That's yeah. what bothers me. Is, is, is that the standard really for, 
for not for, for you content. not for you but what about young girls right who go on social media and it's just full of this you know it's it's, it's kind of like consumerism like you just have everything in your face it's not like you ch- you really choose what comes on your social media a lot of the time you don't necessarily choose but, but that's your parents but, that's but not those, social... those platforms keep your... i mean parents uh, can only c- control you so yeah, much yeah but i look at know? my my girls my girls are on tiktok and they're on instagram they're nine and 11 years old okay they have their own instagram and their own tiktok account all right yeah and they're on youtube okay right i know what they're watching somewhat sometimes i don't know what they're watching right but i want to make sure that i as a father bring them up the way that they need to be so aside from if tiktok and whatever is influencing them i'm not doing my job right then as well because i've got the basis of what a parent should do for their child so what's the what's the worst time that you felt really attacked on the internet I don't feel bad. You don't feel attacked? No, I don't, no, I I feel the attacking, right? I get from the attack that I get, I get 100 million more love. Like just walking up into this room, I took two photos downstairs with the foyer. Love your show, Chris. You're amazing. Love it. I get that daily. So the the negativity, it comes with the territory. And you want that because it means that there's the interesting thing that uh, there's so many people that listen to the show, right? Or follow me on Instagram. Even some of the guys that don't like it, they quote the show. And I'm like, I, we, in radio, that's what we love. They will, they will throw shade at it, but they're still listening. I get it. Look, I get and it. And this we, is what we, we like. We get, we get criticized quite often as You know what I mean? As well. I, I do. I and get that, what And that's, that's, the, that's the love of this. Like, I love, I, I don't mind that. I'm sure it used to make you angry at some point because now you've developed thick skin. You're, you, I, I can tell you're very thick skinned. It doesn't, no, it's not like... Throwing shade at anyone will always affect them, no matter who they are. Were you that mentally strong before? I mean, surely, surely it it had affected you in the past. I mean, does it not affect you at all it's, today? No, not really. Like, unless it becomes really personal about like my kids or something like that, I think that's what would affect me. And I would hope that we live in a you in the country. You know, one of the things I remember was I had the opportunity, which is something that I remember, and it's so amazing was I got to host the, the Pope's visit, right? Right. It was like, for me, that was, you know, probably something that I'll remember top three in, the, in my entire life. Like when I got the message that they've asked me to come out there and do this, I remember I said to um, my manager, Karen, wow, this is such an amazing moment. And, we, and it was for the year of tolerance. Right. And we, and we went out there and we did it and it was such a beautiful event. So beautiful. And, uh, and then I saw a couple of things on the internet afterwards. From the, it's only a small group of people and, you know, I could do anything. I could, I could save a child's life and they would still have something to say about why I did it wrong, right? Sure. And um, I, they, they were throwing hate at this because, oh my gosh, why would they get Chris Faye to host the Pope's visit, yada, yada. It turned, I'm like, for me, I just got sad. It's the year of tolerance. That's what it was. That's why we were doing it. And then these guys who were... I think journalists, I don't know what they, I don't even know what they did, but I, I, I don't even know who they are. But I was like, wow, that's, for me, it just made me feel sad. Like we're here for the year of tolerance. We have the Pope here to do a mass in a Muslim country. I was in there, I've got goosebumps now just talking about it because we had every religion in the world, there were 40,000 people. Yeah. And that's what you took out of that. Yeah. But it's, it's okay not to be everyone, everyone's cup of tea. You know 100%. I mean? You okay. never will be. And, and you've been here for... Uh, 12 years now. 12 years now. Yeah. Did you know that this place existed? Uh, what, this room? Yes. Where we are right now? Yes. Uh, no, not at all. It's a very nice room. Do you like it? What, what do you think it. of the concept of having a secret room where you can dine and you can have this private kind of intimate setting? What do you think of Very that? cool. Shall we use the bell? I'm ready. Are you, are you a little bit hungry? Yep. Are you feeling hungry? What, what happens if I ring the bell? <laughs> it's a creeper. Now there is a door here and it's sort of open. There's another door opening there's behind there. you. I'm feeling very like... So we wanted to treat you to a really healthy dish. <laughs> I love broccoli and beans. Do you like it? What do you think? We, wow. we thought it's, it's on brand with your Faith Fit. I love what it. Do you think? Do you I like lo- it? I love that. I think this is amazing. This is a... Uh, hey listen, I've been to restaurants <laughs> where they'll charge you like a hundred di- dirhams for this. <laughs> Thank you so much, Chris, for your time. It, it's really been a pleasure getting Thank you. to know you, getting to know the personality, you know, the, the guy behind the radio. Um, 
And, uh, and we have a, I have one more surprise for you before you go. Okay. I hope you like it more than food. What could I like more than broccoli and green <laughs> beans? That's, I don't understand. But I'm, I'm not sure you're going to like it. Why would I not like this? This is, oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Who do I think I am? I like it. <laughs> do you get it? I like it. Is this on all of the them or is this just for me? It's just who, for you. Who do I think I am? What a question. Who do I think I am? Mom? <laughs> Let me call my mom. Maybe mom will know who I am. Well, I like it. Who do I think? Who do I think I am? Who am I? I will wear this. Oh, I've got to take my hair out. You're as well. gonna. Is your hair longer than mine? Yeah, easily longer than yours. No, it's not. Yeah. No easy. way. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't guess. think so. Look, look. How long did it take you to to grow it out? I just haven't cut it in like. 15 years, like a lot, right? 15 I've, or, years? I mean, I take, no, I've taken like bits off it, but I always just leave it that long, you know? Wow. Thank you for my gift. I will wear it out of here and I appreciate it. Thank you so much. You might love him, you might not. And just like me, you might even disagree with him on a lot of topics. But think what you will about Chris Fade. He is the ultimate example of the fascinating making of a celebrity. And speaking of fascinating things, if you're looking to have a special intimate dinner, do check out The Secret Room. It's really a one-of-a-kind experience. You get your own butler, you have your own bell to ring for service, and you it's literally behind bookshelves. So it's pretty exclusive, it's pretty intimate, and um, it's a one-of-a-kind experience, really. Do check it out. It's at the library, at the Address Boulevard. You just call them up and you ask for The Secret Room, which is a pretty cool thing to do, if I'm honest. And um, lastly, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe.